Now, it's the air of slightly left centre pops up once again in a week where we hear the band Engine Alley have signed the Mother Records, an entire nation turns us back in gags, and who can possibly blame them? No, instant redemption. Glam crazy with two E's at the end, absolutely brilliant move. From Virgin Records, 20 of the most memorable courses in pop history from the hands of glam rock, the sweet T-Rex, Gary Glitter, Wizard, Hello, Alvin Stardust, Elton John, Roxy Music, and Martha Who with intoxicating listening. It's all about bass and haircuts, Lurex pans, silver spandex and bass and bowl haircuts. Strongly recommended. Public Image Limited, the greatest hit so far. John Lydon, one of the few men in pop who inspires waves of absolute um, sheer and utter love or sheer hatred as well. Um, I personally love my love rise, I love Seattle, I love Disappointed, PIL, the hit, greatest hit so far. The title implies that there's more on the way, hopefully so. I love PIL, this is strongly, strongly recommended as well. And Inner City are back, fire, very, very lush, like the Karen Wheeler album last week, UK Black. This one's very, very harmless for late night, grooving around your car, and it's very, very svelte and very, very sweet, very, very harmless. Of shopping market music, but nonetheless worth a glare or two. And Bobby Vinton, Blue Velvet, writing on David Lynch's um, current media hype mare. Bobby's Blue Velvet Grace hits collection and he's rapidly approaching the status of superstars according to the notes on the back of this one. Bobby Vinton, yeah, it's all about songs, songs, but it's all about songs, songs, songs. In many senses like this, this is a band from Canada based in Scotland. They record the album in Dublin with Don Lonnie. The album was called Five Guys Name O, the band are called Five Guys Name O, and the second thing is called She's on a Mountain. <laughs> Now, of course, there's the negative side of this as well. Echo and the Bunnymen, they're in Ireland pretty soon. Reverberation, therefore, Sam, without Ian McCulloch and without Pete the Freitas. Um, you just wonder who Echo and the Bunnymen really are these days. The single is brilliant, the B-side's better than the album's crap. The Travelling Wilburys, let's rock against the pensioners. The Human League soundtrack to a generation. Well, the Human League, unlike glam rock, synth pop was very, very dated because it actually lacked complete personality. This is 1982, revisited with a vengeance. And Big Audio Dynamite, Kool-Aid. Big Audio Dynamite 2, a band visibly dying on their feet. This is brilliant. This is how it's all about again. It's the songs. This is how to write a song. This is Luca Bloom. And they have Riverside. This is called Rescue Mission. A gift to you. Reason to live. We come together. Season to give. We question everything. When someone's talking, there's nothing to believe. Oh, of love, rescue mission, baby. Seed of love, blossoms in me. Sound of love, rescue mission. Of love, it's a celebration. I give to you reason to live. We come together, season to give. It pains to hear those voices of our children. Okay then, now it had to happen sooner or later. He's finally here. He's a rock journalist, 
He's an a &R man, he's a band manager, he's a promoter, he's a boy wonder around Dublin. He's Jim Carroll. Good morning, Colm. Hey, Jim, how are you? Very well, very well. Irish rock, didn't it die the day that Simple Minds released Sparkling Rain in February 1985? Well, that was the first day it died. The second day was when Simple Minds released Live in the City of Light. You see, the problem was, Simple Minds, when they released Sparkling Rain, loads and loads and loads of Irish bands bought it and listened to it and decided, yeah, we want to be Simple Minds. The problem is, they didn't exactly want to be Simple Minds. They want to have Simple Minds in that they want to be stadium rock, they want to have loads of scarves waving, they want to have loads of cigarette lighters in the air. They didn't look at the music. All they wanted was the whole, whole packaging. Didn't work out. The problem was when they went. Sorry, the problem was when they went over to Britain. They got hammered by the British press, not because of any Irish, any, any anti-Irish feeling, but because the British press divided music into good and bad. Unfortunately, that fell in the bad category. And isn't that a, a recurring theme, really, like over Irish rock the last yeah. ten years? It's a complete lack of imagination. We're getting things too late. We're yeah. latching on to it's the bottom end of movements. It's generic. We're, we're, we're ca ca getting onto things too late. And when we go onto things too late, we just copy what's gone before. We don't make any changes. We don't like have our performers doing anything wild and wonderful at all. In a few cases, we do. But the problem is, we just take what has come before and we use it again and again and again. It doesn't work out. Now, currently, Irish rock, it's really, really in two two straight categories. You have raggle taggle complete lack of imagination, and you have the 1984 guitar jangle, two-chord rut thingy bob. No, isn't that very, very You can also subdivide into two categories, like I said before, good and bad. The bag of tiger thing is dangerous. Very, very dangerous, kids. You have people going around town looking like 17th century troubadours going down to the pond to feed the ducks. You have bands getting signed just because they've got long hair. You've got bands like this. The prayer boat. The prayer boat. Kids, this is the prayer boat EP. Do not approach this unless there's an adult present. This is dangerous. Things like that, when record companies sign bands like that, I honestly don't know what they're doing. Raggle Taggle is not good. Avoid, avoid, avoid. No, no, Jim, Bill Graham, for instance, would argue that what Irish rock needs is a big degree of craziness, but isn't that a small bit made? But it doesn't the whole industry, from management, promotion, media, doesn't need a complete yeah. and utter overhaul. It needs exactly. a new injection. That's the word, an overhaul. It needs an injection of new things. See, the problem is, there is no Irish rock media. You've got a magazine called Hot Press, which, to be fair to it, does do music once every six years or so, but for the main part, is advertising, advertising, advertising. That is a showback to the show, show band days of, of the late 60s, when they're more interested about ham sandwiches and brilla cream than they were about music content, new waves, things like that. The whole Irish industry is still stuck back in those show band days. It's still into going to leagues morning, noon and night and doing nothing else. It's not into working, working, working. I think major labels have begun to realise that, the way they're dropping Irish bands like Fleas. And they're not dropping Irish bands because they're Irish bands. They're dropping Irish bands because, one, they don't sell records, and two, they're crap. There, there is hope, there is hope, but that's what the providing is going to be an Irish rock scene in, in the next century. Mm -hmm. So, Jim, thanks a million for coming in. Colin, thanks again. We're playing out with Sid Straw and Michael Say. This is from November 1989. It's from an album called Surprise. This was a single that's called Future Farty String of Pearls. We'll be Jim with the next week. Good luck. Bye.